I now want to look at an example where we're given a verbal description of a curve and we need to write down parametric equations for it. The curve that I want to study is called the cycloid and the description is as follows. So we have a wheel of radius r and it is rolling along the x-axis, on top of the x-axis. And we have a point on the edge of this wheel and we want to track where does the point on the edge of the wheel go as the wheel rolls. So when the wheel has rolled to the right a little bit, the point is no longer, no longer going to be touching the x-axis, it's going to have moved up, maybe over here somewhere. And when the wheel rolls further to the right, this point moves up some more. When the wheel is to the left, the point's up here somewhere. When it's further to the left, it's up there somewhere. We're going to get a curve looking something like this. And this curve is called the cycloid. So I now want to write down parametric equations for the cycloid. And how can we do this? Well, it helps to decompose the motion into two parts. So let's first look at the position of the center of the wheel. So where is the center of the wheel at time t? Well, since the wheel has radius r, the y-coordinate of the center is always equal to r. And what about the x-coordinate? Well, the wheel is rotating at some speed. Let's say it's rotating to the right at speed r. It's kind of convenient to do it that way. And that tells us that t is the rotation of the wheel in radians from the starting point. Okay. Now what's the displacement of the point that we actually care about from the center? Well, if we look at the wheel over here, we take a line down from the center, a line segment down from the center that has length r, but now we've rotated by some angle t. So we've moved to the left by r times sine t. That's, that's this length right here. That's r sine t. And we've moved down by r cosine t. So the displacement from the center is minus r sine t, that's the x component, and then the y component is minus r cosine t. So to get the actual position of the point that I want, I take the point rt comma r and I add this to it. So I get the parametric equations x equals rt minus r sine t and y equals r minus r cosine t. Now different parametrizations are possible depending on how fast you want to roll, but this one is convenient to work with. Okay, so now that we have these equations, we can calculate the slope and try to understand this curve better. For example, you can see that something funny is happening at the origin, and the slope is probably not going to be defined there, but you can say, is the slope going to get infinite there or not? So let's work that out. So let's do that on the next page. So our equations again are x equals rt minus r sine t and y equals r minus r cosine t. And I can simplify this a little bit to r times t minus sine t and r times y minus cosine t. So let's calculate the slope. So x prime is r minus r cosine t and y prime is r sine t. So the slope is y prime over x prime, which is r sine t over r minus r cosine t, which I can simplify by canceling out the r's as sine t over 1 minus cosine t. So that's the slope. Now what happens at t equals zero? Well at t equals zero, this is not defined because the denominator is zero.
we could ask what is the limit as t goes to 0. So the limit as t goes to 0 of the slope is the limit as t goes to 0 of sine t over 1 minus cosine t. Now this is a 0 over 0 limit. If I plug in t equals 0, both the numerator and the denominator of the fraction are 0. So by L'Hopital's rule, and the hardest part of L'Hopital's rule is knowing which letters and the name are you supposed to pronounce, then this is the limit as t goes to 0 of the derivative of the top, which is cosine t, divided by the derivative of the bottom, which is sine t. Now t equals 0, the denominator is 0, and the numerator is 1, so this is infinite. So that shows that the slope really is going to infinity as t goes to 0. So in this picture, at t equals 0, this slope is becoming infinite. Okay, another thing you can see from this picture is it looks like not at, at the point where it's touching the, the x-axis, this curve is the graph of a concave function. In other words, we could also ch check that d squared y dx squared is negative um, when we're not touching the x-axis, so when y is bigger than 0. So i.e. the curve is the graph of a concave function in between the points where it touches the, or the x-axis. So to calculate this, so d squared y dx squared, I can think of this as d of dy dx dx. Now, using the chain rule, similarly to the way we calculated the slope, I can divide the top and bottom by dt. So this is, this is a slightly subtle thing here. But by the chain rule, if d of dy dx dt over dx dt. So this is d dt of the slope on top, and dy dx, as we saw, is sine t over 1 minus cosine t. And on the bottom, I have x prime, which is just 1 minus cosine t. So by the quotient rule, on top here, I have 1 minus cosine t times the derivative of sine t, which is cosine t, minus sine t times the derivative of 1 minus cosine t, which is another sine t. Um, oh, and I forgot, um, when I, this dx dt, this is actually multiplied by r. There's a little typo there. Okay, and then I'm going back to the top here, I then have to divide by 1 minus cosine t squared, and then I divide this whole thing by r times 1 minus cosine t. So what do I get? So on, t on the very top here, I have cosine t minus cosine squared t minus sine squared t, and then everything else I'm dividing by r times 1 minus cosine t cubed. And this I can simplify to cosine t minus 1, because cosine squared plus sine squared is 1, divided by r times 1 minus cosine t cubed. And then I can cancel out a 1 minus cosine t here to finally write this as minus 1 over r times 1 minus cosine t squared. And is this positive or negative? Well, r is positive, that's the radius of our circle. 1 minus cosine t squared is positive. I'm assuming that we're not touching the axis, so cosine t is not going to be 1. And minus 1 is negative, so this is negative, and that's what I wanted to check. So that's an example of how you can start with the description of a curve, write down 
parametric equations for the curve, and then use those equations to calculate interesting features of the curve, like its slope and concavity.